This piece of sellotape represents your sexual intimacy with another human being. If I stick the piece of tape on my arm like this and I leave it alone, it will stay there forever. If you like, it's become one flesh, it's bound, it's stuck there, it's not going anywhere. But watch what happens when I do this. Okay, I stick it on another arm. Right, okay, it's stuck down and yeah, it will last for a good amount of time, but not as strong as it was before. So what happens if I do it again? And again? And again, what's going to happen by the sixth, seventh, eighth time? Eventually, this piece of tape will not be able to stick to anything at all. And my dear friends, that is what it is like when you and I give our bodies to other people. You see, we were designed to be bound with one flesh, with one person for life. And the more people we keep going with, the more people we keep giving a piece of our love to, the harder it is to have a lasting relationship. Perhaps there's someone watching this now and you feel like this piece of tape, you know, you've made a mess. You've been from person to person to person. Is there any hope for you? Well, actually, yes, there is hope. You see, Jesus Christ can come along and he can be the glue because of the cross, because he died for sinners. He can be the glue which binds you to another person, your husband or your wife, and he can join you there forever because what God has joined together, let no man separate. So if you put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, he can clothe you in his righteousness. Though you're naked, though you're ashamed, though you feel dirty, he can cover you with his garments. And did you know this? His cloak of righteousness is a one size which fits all. In a moment's time, I'm going to share with you my biggest regret that I've ever made in life. And I'll be honest with you, I am quite scared what some of you are going to think of me once I open up about this. But if it means that just one person watches this video, learns from my mistake, it'll be worth all of the embarrassment and shame. But before I do that, could I just read to you a verse which very sadly I ignored and I knew about it as a young man. It's from Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 4, and it says, I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, do not stir up nor awaken love until it pleases. So in other words, there's a precious love which lives within your heart. And it's asleep right now. If you're a virgin, that love is asleep right now. And one day, the Bible says, there is a time to wake it up but only when you look straight into the eyes of your husband, only the day when you look straight into the eyes of your wife. So I did promise you that I would share something quite personal with you right now. So here we go. This morning, I looked at my wife, Emma, and I said to her, I'm not sure I can make this video today. I've been watching these videos of other Christian YouTubers and they've covered this particular topic, but every single one of them protected their virginity. Every single one of them didn't lose it before marriage. And so I just feel like a hypocrite. What can I tell the people about this message? But Emma said, no, remember David and Bathsheba, remember others who've messed up. You do need to make this video today. So here we are, I'm gonna tell you what happened to me. When I was uh, growing up, I really did struggle as a young man, socially, and I was quite awkward and shy, particularly around girls. And all of my friends, they got girlfriends when they were 15, 16 years old. And I was good at sports, so I hung around with them. But I never could, for some reason, get a girlfriend. I'd go on dates with a girl and then she'd end it. I remember once at high school I kissed a girl on a date and I walked out into the yard the next morning and this big group of people were just standing around laughing at how bad I was at kissing. So really, basically I was a loser growing up. And over the years I really tried to, to build up confidence because this feeling of wanting to be normal, this feeling of wanting to be loved and accepted, it never left me. So then when I went to university, I met someone and she was very beautiful and I, I fell in love and we did what most couples do in this 21st century. But I remember that night when I lost my virginity, I went into the kitchen and I can remember this like it was yesterday. I fell down onto my knees and I just cried and cried, Lord, what have I done? And is all I can say is this, this goal, this dream that I was chasing after, like I wanted this more than money or success. I wanted to lose my virginity to the right person. 
and to be in a relationship like everyone else. And once I got it, I felt totally empty, totally broken, and it was actually the biggest mistake I ever made in my whole entire life. I was brought up a Christian, mum and dad taught me the Bible and I knew what was right. I knew that verse that we read before, but I didn't obey it. You know, we often hear stories of Christian women saying they wish they waited until they got married. Well, here you are, here's a Christian man, a red-blooded man looking you in the eyes and saying, I wish I waited. I wish I didn't disobey God. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, if you're listening to this right now and you still have that precious gift of virginity, I plead with you, I beg you this very day, guard it with your very life. Because one day you're going to make your spouse very happy when you look them in the eyes on your wedding night and you say, only you. Only you. I've only ever loved you. I've only ever been with you. But perhaps now you're watching this video and you're like me and you've made a mess. Well, I just want to remind you the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin. And though we've made a mess, there is a God who dwells in the heavens above who can restore to you the years which the locusts have eaten. So today, this very day, if you are living in sexual sin, chase after purity today. It's never too late to seek to be pure. Whatever you do, don't think oh, I've done it once, I've done it twice, what's the good now? No, it's still important today. God sees your heart and as I said earlier, God can join you together with a husband or wife and they will forgive. The grace of God is a beautiful thing and I know I said before that I regret doing it and I do but in some ways I'm, I'm glad these things have happened to me because they keep you humble you remember where your feet have been you remember just what a scumbag you are and how only by the grace of God only by Jesus death and resurrection can I ever get to heaven because left to my own devices I'm just a sinner who is rebellious and wicked at heart I think I'm going to make a few more videos on Christian dating and Christian marriage, but I've already got some here, so check them out if you've not done already, and let me know in the comment box if you would like more videos on relationship advice. And if you've not yet subscribed, please do click the subscribe button right now and that little bell notification.